Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of the Sunderland RTG career mode here on FIFA 19. We're into the month of August today. We'll be starting the league season and finishing the transfer window. We raised some extra funds via the preseason tournament in yesterday's episode. Thank you for all of your feedback on that video. All of the likes, all of the views, all of the suggestions for potential signings here at the club. We're looking to make a number over the course of the first season. We'll try and get some done in this window and then some more done in January as well. General consensus with regards to the uh, free agents was that you reckon I should go ahead and sign Christian Ratiu. So I am going to try and do that to start things off. And then we'll have a look at some of the other options that are available to us with regards to other positions. But this will be a new player to come in at centre mid. Another thing to mention, I kind of brushed Bali Mumba to the wayside in the first episode, having a look at his stats not knowing that he has the potential to get into the late 70s slash early 80s, apparently, according to you guys. So I'm quite, actually quite happy to accept that. So Bali Mamba is going to go out on loan still, but whilst he's still at the club, I'm going to train him and we shall hopefully see the fruits of his first team football elsewhere and his, um, his growth via training over the course of the next few seasons. Maybe by the time we reach the Premier League, he might be a squad player. Uh, Ratsu, though, will join the side and actually go onto the bench. I'll throw him there ahead of my goose. And uh, hopefully we can get a decent uh, season out of him. Uh, obviously, the uh, goalkeeper here, Caseda, has come in as well in this seat in this preseason. Another free signing. And we'll be looking to improve in other new uh, positions as well with more signings. I'll show you who else we've got on this shortlist. We still have uh, Ali Gabba at centre-back, but I'm, I'm not sure. I think we might strengthen elsewhere before going back to centre-back and perhaps not a 29-year-old on this occasion. But I'll leave him on the shortlist for now. Similarly with uh, Georges Manjet. Now that we've signed Ratu, I think we might <clears throat> call our interest on central midfield, perhaps. Well, there, are, there are a couple of options I might be interested in looking at. Uh, that are perhaps more domestic based and more suited to a League One side. Uh, Dian Garner was suggested as a potential loan option on the right hand side of midfield at West Ham. Wait and see what his stats look like. Obviously, a number of these players yet to be scouted will advance forward and these reports will come in over the next few days. Marcus Madison was suggested by uh, multiple players. I don't think he looks that good stat wise, at least judging on uh, what we've got so far. But if he gets one over on Peterborough, I'm more than happy to uh, to make the signing. Jody Jones is another suggestion. Another player that looks like he's going to be quick, but not sure how good he's going to be technically. He says he's injury prone as well, which doesn't necessarily uh, warm him to me. Again, Chris Cadden is another player that could potentially be decent from Scotland. We have Alessio Riccardi for a potential centre mid spot. Although, again, like I say, I'm probably going to lean towards domestic signings initially in the first couple of seasons before we start looking elsewhere once we reach the higher reaches of English football. Gibbs White is a player we could potentially bring in on loan at centre mid, although I perhaps might like to sign him in a season or two's time when Lee Catamol and uh, Grant Ledbitter start to age out. They're bit of probably ageing out already, to be fair, but as informed by the comment section, he actually is from the Sunderland area and has moved back to the club to end his career in real life, so we will allow him that luxury in this save as well. George Dobson is a centre mid that shows good promise, actually, in midfield. Not amazing to start things off, but... Potential. Good potential. Ashraf is a player I'm probably not going to go out and sign, but we'll leave him on the on the shortlist for now. Dan James, obviously courted by Manchester United in real life at Swansea. Very, very, very fast, but we'll wait and see if anything comes of uh, that. I'm not sure how much he's going to cost, but I would be I would be open to signing Dan James. Um, Jabojli? Jabojli? Maybe? Jabojli? Don't know how to pronounce that. Dominic, we'll call him. Uh, a count from uh, Salzburg in the Austrian League. Does look pretty decent, supposedly. But we'll wait and see. And again, maybe a, a second season signing once we perhaps reach the championship. Maybe third season, depending on how well this first season goes. We're not assured of promotion by any means. Jonathan Lecco is a player that you'll be familiar with from the FIFA 15 Cambridge United career mode, I believe. Where uh, we signed Jonathan Lecco on loan from West Brom when he was only... 
17 years of age. Must have been FIFA 17 when he was only 17 years of age. And uh, he was decent then. And he supposedly is just as good now as he was then, if not slightly better, of course, after a couple more years of uh, first team football or decent growth anyway. Uh, Jamal Lowe looks very promising from Portsmouth. Would be a player with a finesse shot trait as well and the flair trait. I would certainly be interested in signing him. And he's cheap too. So that could be a, that could be a real goal on the right-hand side. We have another Red Bull Salzburg player, actually. Patson Daka, a striker from Zambia. Don't know what, anything about him. We'll wait and see. Again, could be a second or third season signing. The striker I might like to sign this season is Sean Maguire from Preston. So I'm... Wait and see what his stats come back like. But ball control, dribbling and finishing suit my style of play, being their standout stats, as well as having good sprint speed, agility and balance. So hopefully, he might be a goer. Eddie Nketiah is a potential loan option, obviously. Uh, we have Kyle Edwards, a potential winger as well. Another player from West Brom, similar to Jonathan Lecco. And then Glenn Middleton, who's currently at Rangers. Supposedly decent potential on him as well. But as you can see, they're recently joined, so won't move again. But... For the sake of having a look and see what his stats are like and maybe potential for a future season, we'll wait and see what the uh, scout report comes back looking like. At present, I'm only training Barley Mumba and um, someone else whose name escapes me. I've also changed... Ah, he rejected the move to go out on loan. We will accept that move for Hume to go out on loan there. Um, I've changed the captain back from Lee Cattermore to George Honeyman at your request. Honeyman is the captain in real life, and you guys would like him to continue to be the captain in this save as well. Katamol will continue to start in midfield for me, although I'm not sure how long he'll be there because of the fact that he's, he's 30 years of age, and obviously we expect his stats to start to drop. So we'll wait and see what happens with his stats. Uh, oh, there you go. Bali Mumba has gone to Accrington instead, so to be fair, he should get... Oh, Cambridge United! Yes, you can have uh, Kim Poyoka because he's absolute shite, and I don't want him. There you go. Cambridge United can have him. That's weird. It's lost my training modules. Please don't tell me that's a thing. Oh, no. It's because it was Barley Mumble, wasn't it? And he's gone. Ah, it was Lyndon Gooch was the other player that we were uh, we were training. Lyndon Gooch. So, Barley mumba has gone out on loan. And hopefully, he'll grow well. Actually, he should get a decent amount of first-team football at... Uh... Oh, he's rejected. Move to Cambridge. Never mind. Should get a decent amount of first-team football. Accrington. We'll wait a little bit longer till the rest of those squad report, scout reports even come in, which is now, and uh, we should be able to. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop it. We should be able to make a definitive decision on which players we're going to go and sign. Oh my god, how many scout reports did we ask for? I'm going to go and have a look at those players in more detail, and then I shall cut back to you. Right, after looking through, we have a clearer picture of who's decent and who's not. Grady Diangana, I'm going to say no to at 20 years of age. And 65 rated, so we'll remove him from the list. Marcus Madison is genuinely an option. He looks like he's better than I thought he was going to be. 70 rated at 24 years of age. Could play at Cam as well, so maybe potential rotation with uh, George Honeyman. It's a little bit more expensive than a couple of other players we'll be looking at at £2 million, though. Jody Jones, pace, not much else, but an option, especially if we find ourselves running out of money before signing a winger. Uh, Chris Cadden, not amazing physically, and slightly better technically than Jody Jones, might actually be slightly better suited to a centre mid role, and like kind of a creative centre mid role, but I'm not sure about him at the moment. Alessio Riccardi, no. Um, Gibbs White, we know that he grows well. Riccardi might well grow well, but to start off with, I don't want anything to do with him. Two star skill moves as well is absolutely dead. Uh, George Dobson looks okay. 90 stamina certainly stands out. Could be trained. 67 rated. Uh, Daniel James, uh, he's, he's fast and uh, decent technically, but slightly more expensive. £10,000 a week wages could be a stumbling block. Uh, Dominic, definitely, definitely could be a very good player. So we'll keep our eyes on him for next season. Certainly. Not looking to sign someone from abroad, really, until we reach championship level. Jonathan Lecco, fast. And okay, technically, dribbling the standout stat as well as having good penalties, apparently. Um, not too expensive either, which is good news. Jamal Lowe, four-star, four-star, six foot tall. Very fast and agile. Phys uh, 
technically not incredible. Not incredible, but could be trained. And cheap uh, too than some of the other options we've looked at. I think Jamal Lowe is my preferred right-sided midfielder at this stage. Uh, Patson Dakar could be decent in a couple of seasons' time. Sean Maguire looks like he could be decent now, to be fair. So I think I'm certainly going to try and sh sign Sean Maguire up top. Eddie Nketiah, we know that he grows well, so don't need to worry too much about it. He's a low rating to start off with. Kyle Edwards, okay physically. Okay technically, again, dribbling, standing out, but not amazing. And then Glenn Middleton, fast, but not much else. So I'm not sure about him. But Sean Maguire and Jamal Lowe, I think, are going to be the two that I go for. I'm going to lean towards getting Jamal Lowe first, I think, rather than Sean Maguire, because we have uh, a number of striking options already. And my winger options, especially with Aidy McGeady, going to be heavily dropping in ratings sooner rather than later. We are probably going to need, probably going to need a winger first. I'll offer them just a million, and we'll see if they'll negotiate. If they 1.35, there you go. I could easily have gone in at like 1.5 and then they negotiated from there, but uh, we'll see if we can get him slightly under valuation. 1.25, will they meet me in the middle at 1.2? We'll leave the sell on clause in there because it actually has a little bit more value to the transfer. They'll accept 1.2, good. Jamal Lowe looks like he could be coming in. He was on £5,000 a week. Now, what is. Sean Maguire on 8,500. So I need to make sure I leave at least 8,500 and maybe th I'm not going to have 3 million in my budget, I don't think. This could be a tough one to try and get both done, but certainly getting at least one done now or maybe another done later in the season. Uh, squad roll. I'll say rotation just to see if he'll accept it. He might want important. Indeed, he does. I'm quite happy to let him have that. I'm just trying to keep his potential expectations for wages down if we can. We'll give him a long, a long deal. Okay, you only want two years. Well, we shall count with four. They'll count with two again and then end up giving him three. Sometimes they accept four years. Sometimes they don't. Evidently, this time is a no. They don't want a release clause. I'm happy with that. Now, please don't ask for too much wage-wise. That's good. That's a good start. Um, I'd be willing to count it. You can have those bonuses because they don't actually take too much out of my transfer budget. But if you'll accept slightly less wage-wise, that would suit me. 5-1. Just I've got um Sean Maguire in mind at the minute. I'll meet you halfway. Four four thousand six hundred. Good. Right, that's a winger in. Now then, can we get ourselves Sean Maguire? I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough to buy him here. Might have to send a player the other way. Uh I've only got two point four to spend, so I'll offer them two point. They might just walk away from this. 3.35. I certainly can't afford that. Just probably left the sell on clause there, to be fair. Uh, how about 2.4? 3.4. I can't afford Sean Maguire at this current moment in time. That's okay. He certainly is the striker that I would like to bring in, though. So perhaps... Perhaps we could look to a loan deal for this first season and bring Eddie and Ketia in. But we do we do have three strikers at the club. We've got Grig, Charlie White, and Gaziah Sterling on loan. Um, I'm going to throw Jamal Lowe into the starting lineup. Actually, no. We'll start with Duncan Watmore. Will it bring the new the new signings on off the bench? And I actually wanted to start. Uh, oh, where'd you go? Matthews ahead of 09. Actually, thank you for your recommendation with regards to the pronunciation of 09 as well. Appreciate that. Um, we'll wait and see what else happens in the window. I might sell someone to try and eke out the money for. I charge one for McGee. Do I let McGee go? I don't want to let McGeady go now. We'll see how McGeady does in the first half of the season. Maybe we'll sell McGeady in January and then sign Sean Maguire then. We'll try that. We'll try it that way around. So I think that might be all the transfer business done for this first window, potentially. Although we'll wait and see what happens throughout the remainder of the month. But I don't want to let McGeady go yet. He certainly could be 
important to us in the first few months of the season. An offer for Adam Matthews that we should be rejecting. Right, I'll play this first game of the month against Charlton. Then, well, because it's the first competitive game of the entire save, so I don't really want to simulate that. And then we'll play Wimbledon away at the end of the month and uh, see my way through the middle of the month, so to speak. So it's Sunderland versus Charlton. It's red and white striped versus normal red and white, but they're going to be playing in white and black here. That's going to be our starting lineup. Grig up top, Honeyman, McGeady, Power, Katamar, Watmore, Matthews, Baldwin, Dunn, Oviedo, and McLaughlin in goal. Tamar Lowe with the potential to come on off the bench, as well as uh, Lidbetter, Ritu, Gooch, and Charlie White. So I'm standing for the time being, going to remain on the bench. Oh no, I don't want to put Lugans in there because he's an absolute shite. He might be 67 rated, but I don't fancy anyone with those sort of physical stats, to be completely honest, being any good whatsoever. We are playing on Ultimus, of course with the more difficult sliders added in as well for effect to hopefully make it quite the challenge to get out of League One this season. Let's see how we get on in Game One this season. Free kick foul. short but here for Lee Catmull to take into in Jack Baldwin. Um, the option there is max power and actually around the outside here could then maybe turn, find someone on the edge of the box being George Honeyman. Nice technique to try and bend it in that corner but Adam Matthews will get to this ahead of Williams, he's got support here from Lee Katamon, which is standing up into the middle. It's not the best of balls, to be fair, but we could recycle possession. We have done it. Stopped to Honeyman again. Duncan Watmore with the effort. Quite comfortable for Chris Maxwell in goal. Our first chance here at Sunderland. Well hit, but well saved. Back there to Forster Kasky. Across here to Cullen. Lyle Taylor could be a player we could potentially look at as striker, actually. He's Jonathan Williams out wide to Page. Little ball back, trying to get there for Sikaski with a really nice turn into the middle, and Williams scores. Charlton lead at the Stadium of Light after 14 minutes. We had the first chance of the game, they have had the second. And the first goal of this save in a competitive fixture goes to our opponents. Well worked, all made by that turn by Forster Kasky, and then a simple finish on his left foot there for Williams. Tucked away really nicely, just inside the post. Good finish. We're 1-0 down here against Charlton. This is actually pretty sure. This is uh, this is uh, a carbon copy of the League One playoff final that is being played this afternoon. Yeah, Sunderland versus Charlton. As I record this, it's 10 o'clock in the morning on the day of the uh, playoff final. So for Sunderland fans, I'm sure they hope that this isn't how things go to start things off. They're going to be playing at Wembley later today, but can we win up in the northeast? We've taken a setback in the opening few stages. We are going to have to come from behind if we're to do so. Prattley. Prattley to Williams. Out chance. wide to Page. The Down the line to Lyle Taylor. This is good football from Charlton again. Another fancy flick. They're really feeling confident in this game. Kasky to Taylor. Good save by McLaughlin. Very nearly 2-0 Charlton. This first season at this level might be pretty damn difficult. On the opening half an hour's experience of League One football, it's going to be a difficult opening year here at Sunderland. Obviously, they only reach the playoffs in real life, and we might be having to set our sights on something similar in this save. Charlton, obviously, is still one of the best sides in the league, so the fact that we're under the cost like this this early on in the first game that I've played with this team is perhaps no surprise against a team of this quality, but it doesn't necessarily bode too well for the rest of the season but we'll have to wait and see I'm sure I'll grow in uh, confidence with this side and in familiarity with it after a few more games but we are looking like we're going to take 62% possession from Charlton in the opening 40 minutes or so and it might be 2-0 no that will be hacked away by Matthews corner for Charlton in the last minute of the first half we are over allotted stoppage time and that was nearly over the line on the volley, that's comfortable enough for McLaughlin, but that's going to be the end of the first half. And it's not the way we wanted things to start here at Sunderland. 1-0 down at the break at home against fellow promotion challengers, Charlton Athletic. Try and quickly work it forward. Will Griggs had to drop deep just to get involved in the game. He's barely had a touch of the ball so far in this game of football. Honeyman around the corner to Catamult. Griggs could make me a decent run here. Made a run. Don't know whether it's decent or not. We we'll use Duncan Watmore first. He's got options here. And here's George Honeyman. Cross here to Aidan McGeady. Aidan McGeady could have equalised, but it's a great block by Solly. And Lyle Taylor will keep the move going. His Hackett Fairchild. 
picked off nicely by Duncan Watmore. Working hard, Duncan Watmore, on that right-hand side. Aidan McGeady, forward to Will Grigg. Can we do anything with him here? He's had a very quiet game so far. Honeyman involved. Runners all around me, one of which is Lee Catamol. Across here to Duncan Watmore. We should have done better. Really good opportunity to give ourselves an equaliser there. And it wasn't the best of strikes from Duncan Watmore. Barely getting any power on it and straight at the keeper too. Honeyman, forward to Grigg. Short there to Lee Catamol. George Honeyman's making the run. And oh, it's a decent enough ball, to be fair, from Lee Catamol. He's certainly spraying the passes in that deep playmaker role. I kind of had him in there as the more defensive player but he's certainly been playing some really nice attacking football Will Griggs touch letting him down there I've got some changes in the offing waiting to be made Jamal Lowe is going to come on on the right hand side for Duncan Watmore to try and add a little bit more pace into the team it's the only change I'm making to start off with although I might make another not too long afterwards Max Power giving the ball away there really frustrating fashion Williams played in down the line Trying to get the ball off him here with Brian Oviedo. Hackett whips the, whips the ball in. It's flicked away. Grigg might get to that first. He won't. Still the Charlton pressure continues. Prattley to Page. Where you going, Mr Page? It's a good run. Good flick. Win that. No. Oh, can't win anything aerially up top. At the back, we've been pretty good defensively with regards in the air. And other than a couple of half chances, they haven't really looked like scoring again. It's a lovely ball. Duncan Watmore played in for a second time. He's not quite fast enough to get away from their back line. Looking for Will Grigg. Uh, back there to Catamol. Max Power. Honeyman. Here's Aidan McGeady. A loft it into the middle and punched away by Chris Maxwell and flicked away by Darren Prattley. Danger averted. Still waiting for those changes to be made. I made them in like the 70th minute. Unfortunately, the ball just hasn't gone out of play. So Jamal Lowe isn't going to have the chance to impact the game on that right-hand side. Perhaps even at all, with stoppage time now being in effect. I'm not even going to go 20 in-game minutes without the ball going out of play. And the substitutes I wanted to make to try and change the game in our favour aren't going to get the chance to come on until now when they're going to take their corner and then the final whistle will go. It's going to be a 1-0 home defeat here against Charlton Athletic. And that is how the league season starts, unfortunately. Fellow... Title challengers and promotion chases Charlton Athletic get a win at the Stadium of Light. We'll have to hope to be better next time around. I wasn't too bad. Certainly had some chance in the game. Aidan McGeady's that got blocked. Duncan Watmore got through a couple of times. The transfer for George Honeyman that will be rejected. So there were signs of promise there from the uh, Sunderland team. Also training Christian Ratiu now as well. I've added his training modules to the uh, to the setup. Promising signs, but not yet the final product. But that's the whole point of an RTG, to take a team that aren't necessarily the final product and improve them and get better from there. Right, Luton away is the next game. Luton won the league, of course, in real life. So you expect them to be challenging at the top of the table as well. So two tough games to start the season. They've beaten Portsmouth in their opening day, who also are a side that are challenging at the top of the table. It was Portsmouth that Sunderland knocked out in real life in the semi-finals of the pre of the preseason of the playoffs so uh, all the big sides playing each other at the beginning of the season here we get ourselves a 1-0 lead through George Honeyman after 24 minutes and with 20 to go that's all that's happened in this game a yellow card for Thorne a goal for George Honeyman and three points for Sunderland well that was simpler than I expected it to be but delighted that that's the way that it transpired with Gillingham coming up next in the cup, the Carabao Cup. I'm not too fussed about that competition, to be completely honest. Although, uh, we could go further in that than... Uh, or I'd like to go further in that than perhaps the Checker Trade Trophy. I really don't care about that competition. Might be a good opportunity to uh, raise some extra funds to Carabao Cup for next season. But Gillingham aren't going to be the easiest of teams to play against. I am going to set up, actually, a second squad, I think, at some point in this month. But for now, they should be... Uh, fit enough to be able to play this next game just a few days after the previous one. We've got Gillingham in the league a little bit later on as well, actually, in this month. 
but if we can get a win in the cup, then that'd be great. We get a 1-0 lead, but it only lasts for two minutes, unfortunately, as List uh, gives Gillingham an equaliser in the 19th minute. Into the second half, we push as Max Power equalises on the brink of... Sorry, not equalises. Gives us a 2-1 lead on the brink of half-time, and then Catamol extends the lead to three. They pick up an injury, which is unfortunate for them. I'd like to avoid too many injuries for us this season because we don't have a massive squad, nor do we have much strength in depth. We're certainly hoping to make additions throughout the course of the season and then subsequently um, train those uh, teams as well and get them to grow. Interest shown in uh, Cadden, but we aren't following up on him at this stage. We do have our first scout report back though, which is hopefully going to have a couple of decent players in it. Let's have a look. 63 to 87, but starting off very low, we'll say no to you. 50 to 70 is a no. 54 to 74 is a no. 57 to 77 is a no. That's a no. 63 to 87, but starting that low is a no. 67 to 91, but starting that low is also a no. Well, not the best of months to start off with from our, <laughs> from our scout, but certainly, hopefully... We can go up from there. Scunthorpe haven't had the best of starts this season there. Two nil-nil draws and a 4-1 defeat. Although they go 1-0 up here through Morris against us because, you know, that's the logic. Will Griggs scores in the penalty spot twice in a space of eight minutes. I don't think I've ever seen that in a simulated game of FIFA 19 career mode before. Two penalties even in the same game, let alone two penalties. Will Griggs gets his hat-trick. Two penalties that close together. It's going to be a 3-1 win here for Sunderland, and we are going to take three points from that game. And then, I believe the next one is Gilling in midweek again, and indeed it is. Injured, out for six weeks, Adam Matthews at right back. Okay. Well, thankfully, right back is one area where we do have, or wing back is one area where we do have a little bit of uh, squad depth. So, 09 can go in there, and hopefully he'll be able to do the job. I certainly expect him to be able to do so. We'll quickly train Christian Ratti. Oh, no, it was Ratti we did last. So we'll quickly train Lyndon Gooch. And getting slightly closer to being 69 rated. Would like quite a bit of growth from the squad in this season. We have a handful of players that could grow quite nicely to the early 70s and a couple that certainly we don't expect too much growth out of, if any at all, like Lee Catamol, etc. But Gillingham away. We've beaten them in the cup at home. Can we beat them in the league away? We shall find out momentarily. Looks like a very similar starting lineup from them to the one in the cup. It's obviously the same starting lineup from me to the one in the cup. George, uh, sorry, Max Power giving us a 1 0 lead in the 19th minute. That was the minute they got their equaliser in the lead in the cup. Here in the league, led bitter on from McGeady out wide left. I'm unsure about that decision from my assistant manager. List picks up an injury for them, and Max Power grabs his second and our second, and we get three points. Thank you very much. Well, other than the defeat to Charlton, so far it's been a very positive start to the season. But it could be, initially, these um, these played games where I'm not used to the side that could cost us the uh, chance of promotion. We're obviously a decent side and of uh, decent quality for the level that we're playing at here. Wimbledon, another team that are decent enough to challenge us, especially away from home. But other than that yellow card, nothing happens in the first half whatsoever. And then Baldwin gets himself sent off. Cheers, Jack. Appreciate that, mate. Very, very kind of you to go and do that for me. Thankfully, George Holman is potentially going to give us three points here, even though I'm pretty sure we don't deserve it. Indeed he is. Well, Jack Baldwin, if this were Football Manager, you'd be getting a warning right now for getting yourself sent off. Unfortunately, I don't have any sort of functionality to do that in FIFA. There's another round of the checker trade... Sorry, of the... Carabao Cup coming up now against Brentford midweek. Ratsu going up to 64 rated, which is a good sign. Hopefully he can continue to grow. Um, do I play this or do I play the league game at the end of the month? Brentford would be... Oh, it's been moved. Okay, well, I'll play this one then. It was actually one was it? Shush as well, there's been another game schedule, isn't there? Because I was in such a... <laughs> I was in such a routine and such a flow of just simulating games, I forgot that I actually wanted to play the one against Wimbledon. Well then, let's go and play Brent... <laughs> let's go and play Brentford away then in the cup and play the second game of the episode. That was handy. <laughs> Ollie Watkins with the whip. Brentford obviously a quite handy championship outfit. If we could get out of the way, that would be appreciated. So I'm expecting a really difficult game here. But it's a good way to test us. 
early on in the season. I'll give this to Aidan McGeady. Forced him a little bit too far wide, but he'll get the shot off. It's well blocked by Dalsgaard. Didn't quite have the pace to get away there, Will Grigg, unfortunately. That's a decent delivery, though. It's flicked on by Sawyers and away from the Brentford back line. Dunn does well to win that, though, and Honeyman will get this under control. Flander going across there to 09. There's Will Grigg. Back there, oh, unnecessary fancy flick from Will Grigg. I've been impressed with him so far, to be completely honest, but there's still plenty of time this season for him to make the right impression. Oh, and that's how you make the right impression! <laughs> Will Grigg! He's on fire. Your defence is terrified. Sunderland are 1 0 up. It was only a matter of time before that came out, wasn't it? Henry, little throw. Ben Rama back to him. Lofted in, headed away by Max Power. Luca Henry with the turn. Forward to Ben Rama. Early cross is decent, and Max Power heads away. Well, Greg brings that down and will approach on the counter attack, but not at much pace because we don't really have much pace in our starting lineup at this moment in time. Oh, lovely turn by George Honeyman, though. Duncan Watmore's made a good run on the right hand side. We could maybe just. Float this for someone at the back post is a good block by Barbe. And we'll have the corner to try and get ourselves a second goal. Oh, I thought for a moment that might have been nestling in the far corner. Unfortunately, it was a little bit further wide than it initially looks as the keeper just stood and stared. I was waiting for it to nestle right in that top corner. Actually, it was closer than I thought it didn't look. Now they played in down the line. Brentford with the opportunity to cross into the middle. Back there to Dalsgaard. Decent delivery. Berama 1-1. One, one. Good cross. Good header. Brentford a level. Right. Expected them to raise their game at some point. Weight of the cross is perfect. He's just got the run on the right back there. 9 not able to compete at all. Just caught napping. Didn't know that he was behind him. He seems to do those. That. Ah, yeah, that's, uh, that's my fault. 1-1. One, one. Game on again. Max Power. Out wide nicely to Aidan McGeady. Forward there to Grigg. Who turns well. The run of Max Power. Looking for George Honeyman. Forced him a little bit too far wide perhaps here. We'll try and turn back. George Honeyman blocks. George Honeyman. Oh, save from David Bentley. Wow. How has he kept that out? From close range. It drops to Honeyman. You certainly expect him to score there. He's just caught it with his forearm. What a stop. Powell will deliver the ball into the middle. And McGeady could be up with a header. It's going to drop to 9 Looking to make up for his previous mistake. Jean Vier with the block to send it round the post. Powell delivers again. Flanagan's up. It's going to drop. Oh, it didn't quite drop for 9 at the back post. Timmy Dunn will recover. Which is loft into a central area where we know we'll find a teammate. Here's Max Power. He's with the effort. Ooh, it's trickling, but trickling wide. Cross there to Ollie Watkins. Ducks away well. Roman Sawyer's to Malpe again. It's a lovely ball out wide there to Rico Henry and stood into the middle. Please win that. Thank you, Brian Oviedo. Tucks in from left back quite readily, Brian Oviedo. He's always seemingly in the right place at the right time when they have an aerial opportunity. I'm looking out wide here for Jamal Lowe. He's come on for the first time for me here. Now Brian Oviedo's pushing forward from left back to left wing. I'm going to float this towards the middle. Unfortunately not finding one, but it'll drop to max power. And here's Duncan Watmore. Good turn. Here is Jamal Lowe. Just keeping possession. Ratu to what more deflected and over the bar. Ratu has come on as well as a second half substitute here to hopefully try and change things up. That's a good whip. Underneath this, Flanagan. Good save by Bentley. And oh, denied the secondary corner as well. Brian Oviedo, seemingly everywhere at the minute. It's set down there to Honeyman. Drop the shoulder. Space here for Max Power. A little bit more space for Jamal Lowe. Takes the touch and fires it straight at the keeper. Sawyers. Over the top looking for the run. And the man at the back post. <laughs> Dominant from the keeper. Duncan Watmore inside there to Honeyman. Out to Jamal Lowe. Looking for Will Grigg. Hopefully Jamal will keep his run going, which he does. But it runs straight into Barbe. Here's Kenos. And there to Malpay. Oh, it's a nice ball. 9 deals with it. Honeyman will bring this down. He's done that well. Turn. Nice. Max Power. Nice. Power. Will Briggs there. Nice. On the outside. Duncan Watmore. Nice. It's still going well. And Griggs here. Grigg. Oh, save from David Bentley. 
Almost the perfect counter-attack swept well by Will Grigg. Slightly behind him. It's done brilliantly to get an effort on target there. And, well, the save is top draw. I've made a change as well. In the meantime, oh, good header by Joe. Oh, Chamalo needed tipping over. Taken off George Honeyman and brought on Lyndon Gooch at Cam. Bentley gets battered there, unfortunately. And we are now three minutes away from penalties. And to be fair, their keeper has been the difference for them in this game. We've certainly had the chances to give ourselves victory. But we haven't been able to find a second goal, will we, before the end? Oh, crossed in, but only finding Josh McEachran. It looks like it is going to be penalties then here against Brentford. Unless on this counter-attack, no. Or maybe 0-9 with another mistake. And Jimmy Dunn recovers to save his teammates' blushes. Dunk Watmore into the middle, but there's the final whistle. It's to be penalties here. 15 shots, 10 on target, just the one goal. And there's not too much difference between the two sides with regards to their penalty takers. This is going to be really, really tense. Are we going to go through to the next round of the Carabao Cup, or are we going to go out? Will Grigg up first for us. I'm going to go left. Saved by David Bentley, as he has done throughout the course of the game. Ben Rama, big runner. Very big runner, actually. And eventually he'll move. There we go. And he's going to go right, I think. Good save by McLaughlin. Now, can we bring us back level at one goal apiece? Duncan Watmore going to go right. We're level at one apiece. Right. Josh McEachran off the bench as a substitute. The former Chelsea man. Another mad run-up. It's like they put the ability to change your run-up in the game. Oh, he's missed the target. They put that ability in the game to change the run-up. And it's like the CPU feels obliged to utilise it every single time they take a pen, which is quite frustrating. I'm going to go right again. Oh, that far away from the end of the keeper's fingertips. Barbe. Where's this going to go? I think middle. I'm going to guess middle. I'm going to stand my ground. <gasps> Made the right decision to send us through then. Max power. Can he power us into the next round? Yes, he can. We've beaten Championship Brentford on penalties in the Carabao Cup. We're through to round number three. A good money spinner for us here at Sunderland. Cup run in the Carabao Cup. I'd like to go much further in the FA Cup when that comes around because that's more of a money spinner. But... You can't deny that we deserved the victory. That was a much better performance from us in game. We're having a good start here at Sunderland. That's certainly a step on from the performance against Charlton. And obviously in the simulated games, we've been doing really well. We're top of the league. I have a funny feeling that won't last as long as we hope it might. But for the time being, things look really good for us. Kula Bali, 92.6 million to Chelsea. Miralem Pjanic to Barcelona for 54 million. And Alex Tellez... To Manchester United for 50. Big transfers so far this season. In the win Manchester United have signed another left back as well in Felipe Luis. And Joel Matip has gone to AC Milan. Why have Man United signed two high rated left backs? Not sure about that. Unless Luke Shaw move has moved on. Fabian Delph out on loan to Genoa in Italy. Must have been at least one big move, surely. Because we're up at 300 million in the first four hours. Still going. Loan deals going through. We could rely on loans perhaps in January, although I would still like to sign Sean Maguire, I think. Grigg did well with his finish there, but overall I haven't felt that comfortable with him in the opening two games I've played with him. But there's still, there's still time for me to click with everybody in this team. But it's a positive start. I don't think we'll ace the league this, the way that we seemingly have done in this uh, first month. But... I would be happy with automatic promotion. It's it's if we're able to improve this. Oh, we won manager of the month. Thank you very much. It's if we're able to improve this side enough for the championship season next year. Because the the thing with the Cambridge United RTG and the fact that we went after missing out on promotion the first year, we then went back to back promotions. Was because we were kind of one season ahead of the curve with regards to our growth. So in the second year, our side was too good for League Two. And then by the third year, our side was too good for League One. So by the fourth year, our side was kind of too good for the championship as well. Whereas if we go straight up this first season, this team is not going to be good enough for the championship with regards to automatic promotion at all. 
and nor would it be at the end of season two either with the growth so i think it would actually extend the length of the series if we get automatic promotion year one perhaps or just any form of promotion year one but there's plenty of time for stuff to change let's not get carried away we are five games into a 46 game season certainly plenty of time for things to change and i'm sure they will do in due course drop the video like if you enjoyed best of luck to sunderland this afternoon in the playoff final against charlton may the best team win i'll see you tomorrow